Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to a gloomy Tuesday here in the Northwest. I had no intention of making a video today, or, or this week for that matter. Um, I'm heading over to Boise at the end of the week to attend the uh, uh, fly fishing show over there. Uh, my buddy Bart Morrow, who owns South Sound Skiffs, a uh, Puget Sound fly fishing saltwater guide service, he uh, contacted me and asked me if I could uh, go with him and uh, help work the booth, maybe tie some flies, you know, BS with people and try to sell trips for him. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, and in preparation of that, I've been tying up some uh, Puget Sound Sea Run Cutthroat fly selections uh, that I'm going to be. Uh, we're going to give them away or raffle them off or do a drawing or something. I uh, haven't quite worked out what we're going to do with them. But uh, anyway. Since I've been cranking out flies, it occurred to me that it would be no problem to just set the camera up and uh, make a video as I do this one. Uh, it also occurred to me that I had not done a video for this little sand lance pattern, and it's a pretty sweet pattern, so I uh, thought I'd better knock one out today. So this is a fly that, uh, big shocker here, was designed, as far as I know, uh, by uh, Mr. Stonefish over at WashingtonFlyFishing.com on the forum there. Uh, Highly recommend you pop over there, check it out. There's lots of good flies, stuff posted over there. A lot of great information. But uh, uh, he posted this pattern, I don't know, a couple, two, three years ago. And uh, at some point I started tying it and fishing it here and there. And it's just a great little pattern. Super easy to tie, super effective. Um, great sand lance profile when the sand lance are, are heavy in Puget Sound as they have been this year. Um, just a good all-around, you know, searching pattern, you know, uh, attractor, if you will. You can tie it in different colors with different materials. Um, this is just how I like to tie them and have been tying these ones for this uh, Puget Sound selection. I'm kind of doing this olive and white kind of combination. But you can certainly do, you know, whatever colors you like. Um, I think mostly it's the profile that uh, makes this fly most effective. But... Anyway, super, super easy to tie, extremely durable fly, which is a crucial element to me. Um, I, I don't like a fly that's going to fall apart after two fish. So uh, this one is built pretty stout, um, and it's, it's got a good jigging action, which I tend to like. Uh, so it's kind of got, got a lot going for it. So we're just going to jump right into it here, since I'm really actually trying to crank some of these things out and not goof around too much. I'm tying these on a uh, Daiichi 2546. Uh, these are size 4 hooks. And uh, so to start off, I'm going to pull my thread out of my bobbin for some reason. Using some uh, 10 knot Vivas uh, olive thread here. Thread probably doesn't make a lick of difference, but I love this Vivas 10 knot thread. It's the greatest stuff going as far as I'm concerned. So. So we're just going to start as usual, lay down a little thread base here, and this is you know this is kind of a clouser esque pattern um, with the the lead eyeballs at the front. Only uh, these are going to be tied basically all the way up at the eye, and I'm just making a little bit of a thread bump here to where I'm going to put my eye or my, my eyeballs. And these are uh, I leave just a you know that's like a thirty second of an inch or something, maybe a sixteenth. Uh, between where the eyes are going to go and the eye of the hook and uh, you'll see why here just a little bit later and as usual when I'm putting in eyeballs I like to put down some glue before I do anything I put a lot of glue on my flies whether they got eyeballs or not like I said I, I hate flies that are going to fall apart and I go to great lengths to make sure that these do not so I'm just going to Put the eyes on, like I said, real, real close. Actually, that's that's a little far back. Wasn't paying attention there. Nothing like a little screw up to properly document a video here. It happens. See how these videos were. Everything is just perfect all the time. Well, yeah, right. Editing is wonderful. I think I'll just leave that little mess in there because that's sort of my style. Okay, so anybody that's watched me tie clousers before knows that I hate eyeballs that move. Hate them, hate them, hate them, hate them. 
So I do anything I can possibly think of to help avoid that. I usually do a couple layers of glue as I'm wrapping these. I just, and I put a ton of wraps on them. So bear with me here. And, you know, every 10 wraps, 20 wraps or something, I like to do a couple of these helicopter wraps underneath to kind of lock those threads in. I've been told in the past that, that I go way overboard for securing eyeballs, but that's okay. My eyes don't move, so. Maybe other people's don't move too, I don't know, but this works for me, so I don't care. And just going one side and the other, and then some figure eight wraps. Then I want to stop and make sure that this eyeball is actually lined up properly. And now I put a little bit more glue. I'm actually in the process of tying up some flies, some selections that I'm selling right now as well. And uh, I've been reading a lot about how to improve tying speed and, you know, things like that. But I, I'm not willing to sacrifice durability in the name of saving a few seconds on a fly, even though I'm, even if I'm tying them to sell them. I don't know. I just... I like them done a certain way, and if it takes me a little bit longer, I'm okay with that. So, all right, eyeball is on. Now I'm taking some of this, uh, this is olive, what is this stuff? I'll need to look at the package. I'll make sure that I include that on the, the uh, intro to this video. But this is from Fly, Fly Tires Dungeon, and it's called Northern Lights, and it's a flash material. Um, this is like an olive and chartreuse mixture or something. I, I cannot remember right now. So everything's going to be tied in on top of the hook shank. And since the eyeballs are tied in on top of the hook shank, it means it's going to ride upside down. So unlike a clouser where you're putting it top and bottom, everything's going on the top of the hook shank as you're tying it. So you need to account for that if you want a white belly. Ordinarily, I would tie my belly in right now because it would flip over and that would be the belly. However, because it's all tying on one side, I have to tie the belly in last. And I've screwed that up plenty of times in the past, but anyway, so I've got this Northern Lights. I'm gonna tie that in. I'm making this fly about three and a half inches or so, give or take. Um, sand Lance here in Puget Sound vary greatly in size um, from just an inch or two all the way up to four, five, six inches probably. So you, I like to vary the, the size so I'll get that lashed down good. And now I'm going with some olive bucktail. Uh, this bucktail is down to the last little bit of usable hair. I've got an order for some more, but it hasn't come in yet. I'm hoping that it gets here soon. I don't like to use the uh, kind of the bottom portion, at least for this sort of tying, because it the hairs tend to flare, they're a little more hollow, but uh, that's kind of all I've got at the moment. So I'm stripping out some of the, uh, you know, the under hairs and, and just thinning this out to the, the size that I want. Um, with bucktail, you really don't need a lot. I, I really believe that's the biggest key to, to successfully working with bucktail is figuring that out. That, if 15 strands will do, then 30 strands is just going to make your fly look like junk. It's funny like that. So, tie that in right behind the eye as well. In case you haven't figured it out, everything is basically getting tied in right behind the eyeballs here. You can see how that flares out there. It's not the end of the world for this pattern, but that would drive me nuts if I was using if it was a standard clouser. So, big shocker. Put some more glue on. I like to 
think that the glue will kind of soak into all the materials, the ones that are there, then the ones that I'm going to wrap on top, put on top, and uh, kind of bind everything together. Okay, now I'm going to go with some, uh, this is Pearl Polar Flash. Uh, use whatever flash you want, of course. I have lots of Polar Flash, and I like it, so I'm using it. I like to try to make the belly just a bit shorter, but it often doesn't work that way. I'll kind of measure that out. Tie that in right on top. Should probably hurry this up. My son knows going to be home from school, which means he's going to come barging through the front door behind me and screw up my video. He loves doing that. He's 15, almost 15 and a half actually. And he takes great pride in torturing his old man. Okay, so now I'm going with some white bucktail. And again, I'm just pulling out under fur and hair and shorter fibers and just getting the, the profile that I want or the size that I want. Take a few more out of there. Okay, kind of measure that out to where I want it. Again, I, I, I did try to make the belly a little bit shorter in length. Um, just because if you think of how a, a bait fish is, that, that white belly doesn't go the entire length of the of the bait fish. So, just personal preference, but for some reason it just doesn't ever quite work out that way. Okay. So, i got that good and secured. Now, I'm bringing my thread right up above my eyeballs, and this is the only reason I live, leave just a tiny little gap there. And this is just my OCD tying. Uh, where's my diamond braid? There it is. What I'm going to, I'm going to use some flat diamond braid, as I do in a ton of flies, to wrap that whole body section. And what I like to do is tie it in in front of the eyes, right between the eyes and the eye of the hook, and I make one wrap. And then I pull it back gently until those fibers, yeah, see I messed it up. You just want to pull it back just to the point where those kind of loose frayed fibers are not on the eye of the hook, but not any further. And it can sometimes be a hassle. You could easily just tie it in behind the, the eyeballs and wrap it. It's not going to be a big deal. This is just, I prefer the look when the, the diamond braid is over the top of the, the dumbbell eyes. All right, there we go. So I just kind of run that right down the center. I'm going to use my handy dandy rotary here in just a second. This is a uh, this is definitely a stonefish trick here. I'm going to take the first wrap of this. And I'm going to come underneath everything. And then I'm going to come back around. And then I'm going to wrap the whole thing as usual with my rotary vise. Wrap it up to the eye. I don't need to be worried about how this is going to look right behind the eye because I'm actually going to cover that up here in just a second. Cut that off. And whip finish right behind the eyeballs. Now I'm going to take some red thread. This is just, uh, this is Vivas 10 knot red. I'm going to come right over the top of where I just tied down that diamond braid and put in a nice red kind of gill section here. This is another stonefish trick that I learned quite a few years ago putting red in to simulate the, the gill flare on a bait fish. I don't know if it makes any difference at all, but I, I tie almost all my flies this way, so I just like the look. Okay, 
So we'll just whip finish that. Now I'm going to take, I've got some Clear Cure Goo Hydro here and this bottle is quite a bit old. I don't think Clear Cure Goo is around anymore. But Hydro is just a, a super thin uh, tack free UV resin. resin. I like to use a, a real thin thin uh, for this because I want it to kind of soak into everything. I'm not, I'm not trying to really form a body, I'm just trying to coat it. Um, you know, it's not like a surf candy fly or something where I'm using UV resin to build up a body and get a profile and everything else. I'm literally just trying to coat this for, well, mostly durability. It gives it a really nice kind of sheen, but uh, more than anything, it just makes it really durable. Okay, hit that with the UV light. And there we go. Super easy little sand lance pattern. You can see the long, kind of slender sand lance, sand lance profile. And uh, the eyeballs are going to give it some jigging action. Great sea run cutthroat fly, great coho fly. Um, you know, I'm sure you can catch rockfish, you probably catch all kinds of things with this. But uh, when the sand lance are around, this one's extremely effective. And even when they're not, it's still effective. So, most importantly, it's easy to tie and it's durable. So there you go, just a super easy, super durable sand lance pattern, extremely effective fly when the, when the sand lance are thick in Puget Sound, it's also extremely effective when there's not any sand lance around. Um, you see it'll, it'll ride upside down, so that's why I, I did the, the darker colors first and then so the white becomes the belly. Super easy tie, give this one a shot, add a few to your box, works for you, love to hear about it. And as always, thanks for watching.